Hi, I'm Nick with iSpring Water Systems. Today we're going to be talking about your pressurized storage tank for your reverse osmosis system. The pressurized storage tank is required with most RO systems due to the fact that the RO process tends to be on the slower side. So the pressurized storage tank provides pressure to the RO faucet on demand so that the moment you turn on the faucet you have a, a steady stream of water uh, rather than waiting for the pressure to build up and the water to flow out. The tank is completely encapsulated. On the inside there's a pressurized air bladder and also air that takes up the space of the tank. On the inside of the tank, the tank is coated with a polypropylene and also with a butyl treatment that is food grade to protect the RO water from any of the metal inside of the tank. This is a four gallon storage tank. Uh, it has a max capacity of 3.2 gallons. The biggest misconception about the storage tank is that uh, most customers believe that the uh, tank will actually hold four gallons or the max capacity of 3.2 gallons. But what customers don't realize is um, because the tank is encapsulated, inside of the tank there's an air pressurized air bladder that takes up some of the space of the tank and there's also air inside the tank. So as the tank fills with water and the bladder is filled with air, the tank will only actually hold about two and a half gallons of actual water inside of the tank. Pressurizing your reverse osmosis drinking water storage tank is an important part of maintaining your system. It can improve your water flow and performance of your drinking water system. If your reverse osmosis tank is not working properly, there may be some causes that could be causing it. Some of the issues you may notice are low water pressure, less volume of water, and it also you may notice that there's a weak or slow stream. It takes longer to fill your cup or reservoir with water. If you notice any of these issues, the first thing you should do is test the tank to see if it's actually full of water. You can lift up the tank if it feels very heavy um, or if you can actually hear the water inside of the tank moving around. Um, you'll know that um, it's most likely an issue with pressurizing the tank or the tank needing to be pressurized. If the tank is light or feels empty, then the issues may be the filter or membrane that need to be replaced. After identifying that pressurizing your reverse osmosis tank is the issue. What may be needed is that you need to follow these steps. The first step that you wanna do is to go ahead and turn off the water supply to the system from the cold water feed valve. Uh, usually it's connected with a red tube coming into the system. You'll turn this to the off position, cutting the flow of water to the system and the storage tank. The second thing you would, like, you would need to do is to turn on the RO faucet. What this will do is it will empty the pressure, uh, the pressure tank. You'll notice that there will be a strong flow at first, but once the tank is completely empty, you'll notice that the flow at the faucet is just reduced to a trickle of water. While you're checking the pressure and, and pressurizing the storage tank, you'll need to uh, leave the faucet on and you'll leave it uh, while it's trickling while you complete this process. Once that is all done and the tank has been emptied, um, as I stated before in the video, the storage tank, when empty, the pressure of the internal bladder inside should be at a minimum of 7 PSI and no more of a maximum of 10 PSI. So anywhere in between that range is, is where you want to be. To check the air pressure of the storage tank, the first thing that you'll do is remove the cap covering the valve stem or pressure valve here. Once this is removed, we recommend that you use a, a good uh, low pressure gauge, uh, typically found at any hardware store and relatively inexpensive. Uh, the reason you'll need a low pressure gauge is because uh, most um, tire gauges for a car or automobile uh, will usually only register starting at about 10 or 15 PSI. In that case, um, if you use a car tire pressure gauge, you'll have a hard time actually getting an accurate reading on the pressure of the tank and this can cause problems such as um, you know not enough pressure in the tank or uh, worse you could over pressurize the tank and thus rupturing the bladder so what you'll do um, once the tank is empty of all water 
You'll need to check the pressure using your pressure gauge. This one is digital, so it powers on. And you just connect to the pressure tank just as if um, you were checking the pressure on um, a car tire. Normally you'll, you'll screw this on or depress it on and it'll give you a reading. Um, as long as you are within the range of seven to 10 PSI, the tank is, has enough pressure and there's no need to add. But if for any reason that the pressure of the bladder when the tank is empty is less than seven PSI, you can add air pressure to the tank by using just a standard bicycle pump small air compressor or like a hand pump. Uh, when you add air pressure, you may need to check the pressure in intervals just to make sure that you're not over pressurizing the tank. On the other end of that spectrum, if the tank pressure is very high, um, over 10 PSI, we would recommend that you release some of the air pressure from the tank, um, typically using a sharp object such as a, a pen or a uh, pair of scissors something, you'll just depress the valve stem inside of the valve here and you'll actually hear the pressure being released, uh, the air pressure coming out of the tank. You know, it's okay if you let out too much pressure, you can always add to it, uh, but you always you know, would want to avoid over pressurizing the tank. Once the recommended pressure is achieved, uh, you will shut off the reverse osmosis tap to the off position. And also you'll want to turn the water supply back on to the pressurized storage tank. The normal process um, for the tank to refill when empty depends on the incoming water pressure. And it also can depend on whether or not you have a system with or without the booster pump. But typically uh, the tank will fill within about one to two hours for, for a typical install. Um, so, until the tank is completely full, um, after you've repressurized the tank, um, it will, like I said, take about an hour to two. And until then, uh, there will be no pressure at the faucet until the tank is completely pressurized and the back pressure provides the pressure to the faucet. We appreciate you joining us today. If you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much and have a great day.